Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about physiologic intracranial calcifications. This is the third video in this video series with title of Basal Ganglia Calcification. The outline of this presentation include introduction, causes of basal ganglia calcification, diagnosis, treatment, prognosis, and conclusion. At first, introduction. The cerebral basal ganglia are a group of interconnected structures deep within the brain that play a crucial role in the regulation of movement, motor control, and coordination, as well as in various cognitive and emotional processes. The basal ganglia are involved in facilitating smooth, controlled voluntary movements and inhibiting unwanted movements. Key components of the basal ganglia include caudate nucleus, which is a large C-shaped structure involved in motor control and cognitive processes such as learning and memory. Putamen, located adjacent to the caudate nucleus, it works closely with it to regulate voluntary movement and coordination. Globus pallidus, divided into two parts, internal and external. This structure is critical in regulating muscle tone and motor control. Subthalamic nucleus, situated below the thalamus, it plays a role in regulating movement, particularly in preventing excessive movements. Substantia niagara, a structure that produces dopamine, which is essential for regulating the activity of the basal ganglia. Its degeneration is linked to Parkinson's disease. Basal ganglia calcification is common and is seen in approximately 1% of all CT scans of the brain, depending on the demographics of the scanned population. It's seen more frequently in older patients and is considered a normal incidental and idiopathic finding in an elderly patient, but should be considered pathological in persons younger than the age of 40 years unless proved otherwise. The causes of basal ganglia calcification. There are many causes of calcification. The first group is idiopathic, which may be related to aging. Basal ganglia calcification due to aging is common and globus pallidus most commonly affected. Another idiopathic cause is far disease. Far disease or bilateral striatopallidodentate calcinosis is characterized by abnormal vascular calcium deposition, particularly in the basal ganglia, cerebellar dentate nuclei, and white matter with subsequent atrophy. Toxic causes of basal ganglia calcification include carbon monoxide or lead poisoning, mineralizing microangiopathy associated with radiation therapy and chemotherapy. These images is related to a patient with mineralizing microangiopathy. It can affect the brain widely with typical sites involved including corticomedullary junction regions, lentiform nuclei of the basal ganglia and also dentate nucleus of the cerebellum. Another toxic cause is nephrotic syndrome, the infectious causes of basal ganglia calcification. Of course, one of the most important infectious causes is torch syndrome, with basal ganglia and periventricular calcifications. CNS tuberculosis, AIDS, this axial city brain showing bilateral ganglia calcification and cerebral shrinkage in a one-year-old child with HIV infection. Another infectious cause is neurocysticercosis, CNS toxoplasmosis. As we know, toxoplasmosis is a component of torch syndrome, but it shows a famous ring-like lesions. Metabolic causes of basal ganglia calcification include parathyroid disorders, including hypopara, pseudohypopara, and pseudo-pseudohypoparathyroidism, and also hyperparathyroidism. Another cause is hypothyroidism. Another cause is birth hypoxia, which may be inherited or vascular. 
the inherited cause of birth hypoxia include mitochondrial diseases, for example, MELAS. MELAS syndrome or mitochondrial encephalopathy, lactic acidosis, and stroke-like episodes, this axial CT images is related to a patient with MELAS syndrome. We can see bilateral calcification in basal ganglia and parieto-occipital hypodensity consistent with stroke light which proved by MRI. Another inherited cause is cocaine syndrome. Cocaine syndrome is a rare disorder characterized by an abnormally small head size or microcephaly, short stature, and delayed development. This axial CT images is related to patient with cocaine syndrome. Axial CT scan at the basal ganglia level show severe bilateral calcification in the putamen and also subtle calcifications are seen in the frontal and parietal cortex at depths of the sulci. This axial CT image of the posterior fossa show bilateral slight calcifications in the dentate nuclei. Another inherited cause is pantothenate kinase-associated neurodegeneration, also known as Hallowarden spots syndrome. Hallowarden spots syndrome is a rare disorder characterized by a progressive extrapyramidal dysfunction and dementia. This axial CT image shows mild cerebral atrophy characterized by bilateral frontal subarachnoid space and ventricular dilatation. Also, bilateral symmetrical hyperdense punctate calcifications are present in the globus pallidae. Here is better to know that Hollowarden spots syndrome has a famous appearance in MRI named trigger eye appearance. Another inherited cause is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is not recognized as a common cause of intracranial calcification, even though it's a common finding on head CT noted in about 11 to 27 cases of Down syndrome. Calcifications predominantly involve basal ganglia, with globus pallidus being the most common structure affected. This axial CT images is related to a 7-year-old girl with Down syndrome. We can see symmetrical hyperdensities or calcification involved bilateral globus pallidi. Also, there is calcification in the head of right caudate nucleus. Another inherited cause is tuberous sclerosis. Methemoglobinopathy, Sanjat Sakati syndrome. Sanjat Sakati syndrome, also known as hypoparathyroidism, intellectual disability, and dysmorphism, is a rare multiple congenital anomaly syndrome, mainly occurring in the Middle East and the Persian Gulf countries, characterized by intrauterine growth restriction at birth, microcephaly, and congenital hyperparathyroidism. Also, there is facial dysmorphism of affected child. Also, it may present with seizures. Icardiguterus syndrome, also known as pseudotoxoplasmosis syndrome, encephalopathy with basal ganglia calcification, or curry encephalitis, is a rare inherited disease that mainly affects the brain, immune system, and the skin. This non-contrast CT brain demonstrates extensive calcification in the basal ganglia bilaterally, the thalami, the periventricular white matter in the occipital lobes and frontal lobes bilaterally. There is also evidence of cerebral atrophy. The vascular cause of birth hypoxia, famous as developmental venous anomaly, which is a unilateral involvement. These images is related to a 40-year-old woman presenting with headache and seizure. An axial source image from CT angiography demonstrates mineralization of the right caudate and anterior putamen, with a spreading of anterior limb of internal capsule. An adjacent developmental venous anomaly is demonstrated in the periventricular white matter coursing toward the midline. This lateral projection venous face image from a catheter angiogram demonstrates the venous radicals of the developmental venous anomaly converging toward a common venous pouch. 
focal stenosis presents as a caliber transition zone is present where the pouch meets the inferior sagittal sinus. A second possible stenosis is present at the point where the inferior sagittal sinus drains to galenic system. And this is a patient with volumental venous anomaly, which causes birth hypoxia and also basal ganglia calcification. Diagnosis Of course, brain imaging has a crucial role in diagnosis of basal ganglia calcification. The hallmark of basal ganglia calcification is the visible deposition of calcium in the basal ganglia seen on CT scan or MRI. But in plain skull radiograph, sometimes we can see basal ganglia calcification. These imaging techniques allow for the detection of abnormal calcium deposits and help in differentiating it from other neurological conditions. Blood test. To rule out underlying causes such as metabolic disorders or electrolyte imbalances, blood tests for calcium, phosphate, and other relevant markers may be conducted. Treatment Symptomatic treatment There is no specific treatment to reverse or stop basal ganglia calcification, but symptoms can be managed. For example, medications to control movement disorders like Parkinsonism or anti-epileptic drugs for seizures may be used. Treatment of underlying conditions If the calcification is secondary to another condition such as hyperparathyroidism or a metabolic disorder, treating the underlying disorder may help manage or alleviate symptoms. Prognosis The progression and severity of symptoms can vary widely depending on the underlying cause, the extent of calcification, and how early the condition is diagnosed. In familial cases, the condition may progress slowly, while in some secondary forms it may be linked to more rapid deterioration. And in conclusion, while the exact cause may vary, imaging studies are okay for diagnosis, and treatment is usually aimed at managing symptoms. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.